Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another live chat. My name is Lakin, and I go live every Wednesday here on my channel at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'm excited to hang out and chat today. Let's kick it off with our first question that we always start with, which is what is one small win that you have from the last week? I would love for you to share down in the comments. If you're here live, share in the live chat. Sorry, my eyelash keeps getting touch, like touching my... Um, glasses and I have very long eyelashes and I don't know if I just like didn't curl it enough because I can like feel it touching my glasses. It's very bizarre. Anyways, the, uh, if you're here live, share in the chat, what is your one small win from the last week? And if you're a part of the replay fam, please share down in the comments. If you are watching the replay while I wait for some of the comments to come in, I will share mine with you. And that is that I finished organizing my kitchen, which if you watched my quarterly goals video, it was an overarching quarterly goal that I did manage to get done in January, which that is what happens. Sometimes things take us longer than we expect. Sometimes they take us less time than we expect. And this was one of those goals that as soon as I started it, I was motivated to keep going. And so I wanted every time I found like a pocket, a five to 10, 15 minute pocket of time, I would organize a drawer. I would organize a cabinet. And now my kitchen is ready to go. It makes me so much happier to be in there. Some of some things I didn't change at all. Some things I didn't actually make any changes from what was unpacked before. If you haven't heard me talk about this, my, we moved while I was pregnant and I had a very rough first trimester and I wasn't cooking anything at the time. And so between being exhausted and not wanting to cook, my kitchen was unpacked, our kitchen. Um, I spent the majority of the time in there between my husband and my mom and my sister. And so things were in places I probably wouldn't have put them. And some things I didn't change around, but there were definitely some things I switched up that are, is making a difference and making me very happy. So that is my win for the week. I guess that's not technically a small win um, because it's me checking off an entire quarterly goal, but it feels really good. We did out my garden beds to get ready for spring planning. That's so exciting. Every one of you who gardens, I am always so impressed. So I needed a sip of this iced coffee in my cool mom club Cool mom club. I feel like that's hard to say five times fast. Cup um, that my future sister in law got me for Christmas. Made my bed yesterday. I've been sick this week. Oh, Jamie, I hope that you're feeling better soon. I advocated for myself to get better medical treatment. That's huge, Jackie. That's a huge win. So proud of you for that. Almost halfway through Court of Thorns and Roses and purchased my first yak track. I have never heard of that. Jennifer, but that is amazing. Also so impressed at your progress on Court of Thorns and Roses. I am going to get to that book this year and I'm going to read it. I'm going to do it. I promise. And then we'll get to talk about it. I exercised today, even though my back hurts, took it easy, but felt I needed to get back into it since all the sickness in January and blood circulation. Blah, 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 blah. I can't even talk. Yiki. Getting blood circulation going is good for the back. It is sometimes injuries are one of those things. And I know I, I've talked about her before, but Justina, my friend Justina, who's YouTube channel is all about like personal fitness, health. She's a per personal trainer and a nutrition coach. And she talked, she did a video, which I'll link below after the live is over. Um, I don't know, a couple months ago about how when you have an injury, sometimes actually getting moving can be really helpful for that injury. So I totally feel that, that like sometimes getting that blood circulation and that movement and it not being so stiff can be good for it. So that is definitely a win. Linda, thank you for being my example. If your name, your YouTube handle or your Facebook name is not the name you prefer to go by, I would love for you to include your name. You do not have to include your last name. I just like to be able to say your first name. Um, so back on the reading bandwagon, got set up done for your radiation treatment, sending you all of the healing vibes. River J, it's so nice to see your name pop up, added to organize our physical and mental health burn bullet journal. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh, lots of advocating for ourselves today. Advocated for myself at my annual physical. Love, love that. Tracked my January spending and didn't freak out. My numbers were over budget. Brittany, that is amazing. You have to know where to start. And sometimes the numbers are not where you want them to be, but you have to know where they are in order to make changes. And so tracking is step one to that. I love it. Awesome. I love hearing about all of your wins. Oh, it just makes me so happy. All right, let's jump into the book update section, reading update section of the live. So I did finish one book last week. I finished the audio book I'm listening to called Speak, which is Tune Days. 
I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her last name because I 1000% would butcher it. It is her autobiography. And I thought I loved her before. After reading the book, I love her even more. I mean, I've always loved her classes, both her ride classes, as well as her arm and lightweight classes. If you're a Peloton person, you know, and her audiobook is was just absolutely fantastic. Even if you're not a Peloton person, I would still recommend this. I actually gave it five stars on Goodreads. Highly, highly recommend. There were so many little nuggets that she said that I was like, yes, 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 all of that. So absolutely loved that. Still currently reading, carrying over from the last however many weeks, um, is The Lazy Genius Kitchen. But spoiler alert, one of my February goals is to read nonfiction every single day. And so that will hopefully help me start to make progress on this physical book. Sorry, my hair was bothering me there for a second. Also still reading Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I have this from the library and I'm, I'm kind of torn right now because I've been enjoying these Harry Potter books more at like a leisurely pace. We listen to that. I listen to them to fall asleep. We listen to them during any night feedings. And it is just like relaxing to me. And the first, um, the first, I don't know, maybe four or so, and also lined up with the age of my daughter, th the speed at which I was listening to them worked with the rental time from the library, right? The 21 day, it was fine. The later books that is not working. Um, so the last one I had to like rush through the ending in order to finish it. And I'm kind of getting there with this one. Like if I just listen to it when I want to, I'm not going to finish it before they take it away. And I'm not, I don't want to buy it. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do there. If I'm going to try and rush through it or if I'm going to continue to enjoy it at my leisurely pace. And then as soon as it's done, put it on hold again and wait and then finish it later. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Um, and then the, the biography, autobiography, autobiography that I moved on to after I finished two days is speaking of Harry Potter beyond the wand, which is Tom Felton who plays Draco Malfoy. Also fantastic so far. I definitely prefer an audio by an audio book autobiography read by the actual author. I know we talked about this a bit last week. This one I'm enjoying so much. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I'm about 30 ish percent of the way through it, but I already am very much enjoying it. It also makes me want to rewatch the reunion the, uh, thing that they did a couple of years ago, but I'm enjoying this so far. I also have Maggie Smith's book on my list, and it also then makes me want to Google, are there any other Harry Potter um, actors or actresses that have auto, like autobiography books that I can read because enjoying that? And then number two, I then turned into a conversation with my mom do any of the, does anyone know? I did try Googling it and couldn't find anything. I didn't look up anybody specific. Are there any of the Game of Thrones actors or actresses that have a biography? Because I also want to listen to that. So um, that is the one that I have moved on to. The other reading update that I want to share with you, which I think I'm spo definitely spoiling some of the goals video by telling you this now, but that's okay. So I am reading The Daily Stoic, which is a daily read, has one page per day. And they're dated. And I knew for sure that I wasn't going to read the entire thing. Like I am going to miss days. That is going to happen. And so I originally wasn't going to count it in my Goodreads as like books read. But I decided to make a goal for myself. If I read 80% of the days, then I will give myself credit in Goodreads. So I feel like that will motivate me to keep going. Not that I don't think I would because I'm absolutely enjoying it. But I thought it would be a good um, like just something specific. So right now, as of the end of January, I am at 90%. And I, I'm glad that I'm ahead of that 80% because when we travel, like I, I have to decide, and I talk about this a little bit in the goals video, I have to decide, like we're going to go to Houston for a week. That is, if I just don't, if I do every other day that month, except that week, I'm going to be below 80%. So do I want to take it with me or get like the Kindle version? Or do I just accept that that's going to happen and I need to be more committed when I am at home. Anyways, that's kind of where I'm at. So um, I'm going to update you, keep you updated on that every week as well. So in total, reading goal, I'm at five books total for the year, but only three of my 20 specific books that I want to read for the year. And if that confuses you, I talked to, I did a whole video about my reading goal. And then last week I talked about how I changed it from 15 to 20. So any comments, questions on... I can renew audiobooks at the library as long as there aren't, are no holds. Absolutely. Same, Jennifer, uh, but there's like a hundred people waiting for the Harry Potter book. Yeah, it's not like I can't just renew it. I already tried. 
Mm, I love Game of Thrones so much. I know, me too, Stephanie. Me and my mom, my brother, were just talking about how we cannot wait to uh, for the the new one to come out this summer. And then I just saw your other comment, which is the answer. Take a photo of each page for the trip and read on your phone. You're the best. Thank you. That's the answer. That is the answer. So I don't have to take the book, but I still have the opportunity to read it while we're there. I've enjoyed Lauren Graham's book. She narrates them herself. Ooh, okay. I'm going to add those to my list. I also, and I know last week we talked about the Obama books. So those are also like next, besides the five ones that I shared last week, I added the Obama books like as the next three on my list, both of Michelle's and then Barack's book. My mom has Becoming and why can't I think of it? A Promised Land. She already owns those in audio, so I can just use those and then I'll rent The Light We Carry, which I own all three of them in physical physical book, but I want to listen to them. And then Lauren Graham's, her one book, something about talking fast. I tried to read it once and did not like the physical book and couldn't get into it, which is seems bizarre because I absolutely love Gilmore Girls, but maybe audiobook is the answer for me for those. So thank you. I feel like I have to listen to it probably at like one and a half speed in order to just like get the vibe of Lauren Graham, right? It isn't, I feel like her book is, is called something about talking too fast, um, which is just Gilmore Girls in a nutshell. All right. Book updates. Love it. You should think ahead and put the Daily Stoic pictures on your packing list so you always remember. Can you like, can you send me that? Get a text. Can you see it after this live is over? Um, brilliant. And also spoiler alert for February, one of my action steps is to get started on the packing list for Lila, really. Obviously my packing list already exists. Mine is to like check mine over and make sure there's nothing I want to add, like Daily Stoic pages, and then start working on her packing list for that trip. I love that idea. Y'all today with the brilliant ideas, winning. Okay. Before we move into the topic for today, we're adding another recurring thing to the lives. So if you are on my email list, which if you're not, I don't want to say you should because should is not an answer. And I personally do not like email newsletters. So I've always struggled to be an email newsletter sender, but I am committed this year and I'm sending them once a week. So this week, I talked about how I loved the vlog. The vlog that went up on Monday was me checking in with my monthly goals and telling you how they were going. And I thought that style of vlog was really awesome. And I I also enjoyed it. However, in order for that vlog to come out chronologically, the turnaround has to be quicker than I am comfortable with on a regular basis. In January, it worked out because of Vlogmas and I was already behind, but on a regular basis, like all of the February vlogs of Plan With Me's are already filmed. So it doesn't, there's no way for me to film that check-in and then upload it comfortably. So I kind of brainstormed it via my fingers in that email about where else or when else could I update you on my goal progress. Duh, right here on the lives every week, I can post a picture of my goal planner and share my progress with you and talk about it. I just thought I was like, duh, like, I don't understand why that had never crossed my mind before. So here is the update. Now, the irony is that today is January 31st. So you are seeing, I took this picture last night. So you're seeing my January goals page. I'm not going to talk about it in detail this week because the goals video is coming out on Monday. And anything I would say about this right now would just be completely repeated in that video coming out on Monday. So the last one of the month doesn't totally work. Um, It doesn't really make any sense. So, but in the future, like next week, I will be able to show a picture of February's and we'll be on day seven and you'll be able, I can talk about my progress for February. So this week, I'm just kicking off and telling you that's what I'm going to be talking about. And I'm really excited. So I would love to hear what your thoughts are on that. And um, I'm excited about it. So hopefully you are as well. Where, when are you traveling? We are going to Houston for Passover to visit uh, my in-laws and to see, to take Lila to also meet lots of friends that live down in Houston. Like that's where Sam grew up. So lots of his family and friends live down there. And then in May, we're going to New York. We have a wedding in New York. And then we decided, so we actually have three weddings in 
I'm going to put New York in quotes because the other two are actually not in the city. This one is actually in the city. And we knew we wanted to extend one of the three New York weddings into a larger trip and take Lila with us again to meet all of our New York not really, I was going to say family. They are like family. We have lots of really good friends that live in New York. So we decided that would be the May one. So in May, we are going to New York, all of us, and taking her with us. And then in June, we have a wedding in Jersey. That's one of the New York ones. So we're flying into Newark, but the wedding is in New Jersey. And then in the beginning of July, we are going to San Antonio slash Corpus to visit my family. Um, and my stepmom's family from upstate New York is meeting us down there. So we are doing like a whole family thing. Um, Texas in the middle of July. It's not my idea, but it is what it is. That is when we're going. So yeah. Um, and then we, that's all we have booked so far are those trips later in the year. We have another wedding that is an hour outside of the city, kind of like on the Hudson at this like really beautiful winery. We have um, Sam's work trip, which can actually, there's two, we could go to two different places. Um, if you've been around, I've talked about this before, but my husband runs his financial planning practice through New York Life Insurance. And they have a trip every year for like um, hitting different levels of it's not even just sales. There's all kinds of ways to hit the different levels. It's very complicated, actually. Um, when I used to work internally on the corporate side, like it just made pricing products as an actuary very complicated. Anyways, he has hit the first tier. There's three tiers of the trip, and he's hit the first tier every year that he has been eligible. Um, and this year, he's already hit the first tier. So we're for sure that one is an option, but he could hit the second one. Um, which is really exciting for him and his business. But it also means that the two options of where we could go and the dates that we would be gone, we have no idea. And it, we could find out uh, as close to it ends June, like the date cutoff is June 30th. So that was, that one's kind of bizarre. And then I feel like there's one more trip on our radar. Oh, we are going to Ann Arbor to go to the Texas Michigan game. One of my best friends who lives here in Chicago, her husband went to Michigan, is a huge Michigan football fan. And so Texas is going to be playing at Michigan this year. And Michigan is just one of those stadiums I've always wanted to go to. It's a famous football stadium. Um, and so we made arrangements with them to go. We're just driving, obviously, but we have we already have accommodations in Ann Arbor to go to the Texas Michigan game. I'm so excited. I'm really excited about that trip. Seeing progress updates will be so helpful and spark questions and conversations on how to track goals. I agree. Do you have recommendations for YouTube videos or audio books about executive presence? It's one of my goals to work on, on showing up with authority at important work meetings. Megan, I can't think of anything that I have ever listened to. I did talk a little bit last week about the fifth trimester book, which is very specific. And I, I know you're a mom. And so very specific to being a mom and that transition. It's not specific to what you asked, but there is a chapter that has this topic as a part of it. I can't think of anything, but if anybody has any recommendations for her, either here live in the chat, or if you are watching the replay and you have recommendations, please leave them in the comments. And then Megan, I would recommend coming back in a couple of days and checking the comments and seeing if anybody has any suggestions for you. Okay. Wow. I babbled a lot. Um, and now we need to talk about the topic for this week, which really is not, it's just kind of a general, it's January 31st. That's the topic. It's January 31st. And I have things I want to talk about. So first piece of this is, do you feel behind? It's January 31st. We are one month into the new year and maybe you're feeling behind. And if you are feeling that way, you're not alone. First off, lots of people feel that way. But what this means when you say, I feel behind, behind means you're comparing yourself to something. So you have to ask yourself, okay, when I say I'm behind, what am I comparing myself to? Is it somebody else? Am I comparing my goal progress to somebody else? And as always, I will remind you again and again that nobody has your life. 
nobody's life looks exactly like yours. Even if you're like, oh, but they look kind of similar, right? We live in a similar place. If kids around the same age, we have the same job. Nobody's life is exactly like yours. So you cannot compare your progress to somebody else. So that behind does not exist. Likely you're comparing to your expectations of where you thought you were going to be. And I am here to remind you that we have no idea how long things are going to take. We are all very, very bad at estimating how long we think things are going to take. So you cannot say you're behind to your expectation of where you thought you were going to be. If you, let's say, let's talk about reading again. You set a reading goal for the entire year to read 50 books. So that is approximately a book a week. So you set a goal for January to read four or five books. Let's say you've read two or three. You then will say, I am behind. Like, I'm behind on that goal. You are behind in compared to your expectations. You still read two or three books. That's awesome. All that means is you need to adjust the goal. Your expectations of how much you time you had to read were not realistic. So let's switch it. You are exactly what makes sense for your life. Maybe you're also comparing yourself to a prior version of you. Well, last year, me had already read six books at this point. Okay, great. Just like your life is very different from somebody else's life, last year, you was very different from this year, you. You are one year older. You have changed. Even if it on the surface, it doesn't look like anything's changed about your life, something has changed. So you cannot compare yourself to prior version of you. Now, when we take this, I am behind feeling with the fact that we're one month into the year, my guess is your motivation or that new year umph is probably gone or will be gone soon, right? You're feeling it kind of creep in its way out the door, especially because February starts on a Thursday. It's like, hmm, okay, well, that's weird. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like it is, it's in the middle of the week. So you don't feel like, like having that fresh start into February is a little bit harder to find. So my guess is you're not feeling as motivated as you were at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the month, which means we need to focus on momentum. You saw this coming, right? Momentum is the answer, not motivation, which is why that's the topic for February. For the Goals of Lakin community, we are talking about momentum in February, how to keep it, how to create it when you need it, all, all the things related to momentum. And I actually have the whole month mapped out. Y'all, like I have all the calls already planned. All the texts relate to the calls. Facebook, it's, I'm actually very excited about the whole thing. Instead of just like doing it one week at a time, like I have for the past year, the entire month is planned and mapped out. And that is what we're focusing on. In this live, in this video, I'm going to give you three quick tips, three quick. And for some of these, these are probably going to be reminders. You probably heard me say these things before, but what are the three things you need to remember about momentum? Number one is you need to see the progress, right? So going back to talking about my goals, you need to be able to see the progress that you're making, even if you don't have near as many check marks as I do for January. Okay. I had a great January. I was very focused and I got a lot of things done. You need to be able to see your progress. So whether that is in a goal planner, whether that is in a tracker, whether that's in a Kanban board that you're moving sticky notes over, I what, there's a million and one options and maybe there's more than one option for things. Where are you seeing the progress that you're making on your goals? Because I'm going to tell you for most of your goals at this point in the year, you're not going to visibly see it anywhere. I just like spit on myself. You're not going to see it. Now, yes, I talked at the beginning. My win for the for the week was that I finished organizing my kitchen. That is progress that I can visibly see for my goals. But unless your goal is like a decluttering or like home organizing project, you probably don't see progress yet. Maybe you see progress in how far you are in the physical book, or maybe you see progress in, I don't know, I can't even really think of another example that you're this early in the year, you're going to be able to see it. So you need to find another way that you're going to see that progress. Number two is you need to make your action steps even smaller. I was just texting with a community member this morning and she was like, here are the three goals that I gave up on in January. And they were all huge. One was to quit soda entirely. One was to go on a walk with their dog two times a day. And now I can't even remember what the third one was. But I was like, those are giant steps. Those are giant. Those are big, massive leads. Those are not small steps that we're taking. We need to make those even smaller. 
And if you are struggling to figure this out, comment and let's figure out how to make your action steps even smaller. Number three is you've got to put your blinders on. Do not look at around the room. Don't look at other people. Don't look at other people's goals. Don't look at other people's progress. There are times that it can be inspiring and motivating to look at other people's progress and and get excited. Right now is not really that time. I would encourage you to focus on your goals and put your blinders on like a horse, a horse race. That's the, that's where this phrase comes from as a horse racing has these blinders that they can't see what the other horses are doing. They don't get distracted by the other horses. They're focused on their own race. They want you focused on your own race, which means the last piece of this, there is still 92% of the year left. 92%. That means you could do something every day for the rest of the year and still get an A. Just a couple minutes ago, I talked about how my goal for the Daily Stoic is to read 80%, not even 90%. You still have 92% of the year left. That's a lot. January may have felt like the world's longest month. Okay. I was also talking to my mom about this this morning. I think January starting on a Monday, which was awesome and exciting, made it feel like the world's longest month because it maxed out on weekdays. <laughs> we were maxed out on weekdays for January and it felt like forever. Forever. I was so ready to turn the page for February and I had a great month and I still wanted to turn the page for February. There is still 90, 92% of the year left. So even if you have done absolutely nothing in January, which my guess is if you're here listening to me, you have done something in the month of January, there's a lot of time left to make a lot of progress on a lot of goals. Okay. Those are all my little topics and rants that I have for today. Let me get back to the comments. Amanda, I'm so happy to see your name. You haven't caught a live in a very long time. Definitely feel behind. I'm comparing my progress to my own expectations. But last week's live helped a bit and I'm celebrating the wins I have and remembering that there is plenty of time. A key yes. And your situation is something popped up that you weren't expecting. So not only were you behind compared to your own expectations or think you're behind compared to your own expectations, it is expectations that got changed because something else popped up right? It's okay. Celebrate the wins that you have. Definitely feel behind because you haven't settled on your goals for the year. You and I talked about it. So trying not to be too hard on myself. This is also very possible. Maybe you feel behind because you haven't started on your goals for the year. All that means is that your goals are not yearly goals. They're, they're 11 month goals. That's it. It's, there is no right or wrong time to start your goals. I was actually just talking to somebody the other day who was like, I think I'm not going to start any goals until after tax season is over. Like things are just too crazy right now. I don't have time to think about it and like feel like I'm setting good goals. So I'm just going to wait till tax season is over. And I said, that's a great idea. I think that is a great idea. That is not behind. So when they're starting their goals on, it's probably not going to be April 16th, right? But let's say May 1st, they might automatically assume like I am behind compared to everybody else. But that is the timing that makes sense for them. Mm. A recommendation from Megan, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown is about leadership. I actually have that book, but I have not, um, I've not read it. Lincoln drops truth bomb and sips water, sips coffee, all the caffeine. I feel like I just needed to let that sink in for you for a second. There's so much time. Yes, progress, not perfection. Amber, somebody else suggested this. Yeah, take pictures of the pages you would need during your time away. Also, I love your photo of you are brave. All right. Any other thoughts, suggestions, questions, things you need a pep talk on related to this topic, even though, again, this topic was kind of a little bit vague. It was just like when I saw that there was a live that fell on the last day of the first month of the year, I was like, I just need to talk about like, it's okay no matter where you're at right now in January. We need to keep going and momentum, blah, blah, blah. Like, I didn't really feel like there was a specific topic, which I remember my content manager being like, um, she was like, that's not really a topic. And I was like, yeah, trust me, it, in my brain, it works what, where, where we're going to be, where we are going to be on that day. It makes sense to me. It's also why the community calls to me and not yesterday. I still haven't switched over to my winter closet. 
Allison, it's cold there. How are you? How are you doing that? How are you doing that? I love that momentum is the next topic because I really feel like that's what I'm missing. Every health self setback makes me lose momentum and I have to restart every time I get well again. Ooh, yes. Oh, I can't wait to tackle that. Yes. It, again, also to me, that just made sense, right? That February would be the, the topic for February for the community would be momentum. That just, it flowed in my head. Oh, it feels good. It feels so good. All right. I just realized, I don't know what happened to the, the little pop-up that said like general Q and A time. Okay. Pop-up. Imagine there's a pop-up here that says, we are moving into general Q&A time. Perfect timing, 30 minutes. Whatever it is that you want to chat about. It can be a question about my goals, something I have shared. It can be a question about something you are struggling with or one of your goals. And I promise you that even if you feel like it is so specific to your life, somebody else is going to benefit from hearing the response. I promise you that. If there's something y'all want to chat about that you don't know how to phrase it into a question, you can just put topic and whatever the topic is. And I think that's pretty much the whole spiel. The rest of the time, the rest of the 30 minutes is yours. Whatever y'all want to chat about this week. What do you feel ready, excited for February? Have you started your February goals? I just took a big obligation off my plate that I've had for months. Decided I didn't want to do it, so it's gone. That is a huge win, Allison. So many, like that has to feel so good. We, time and energy are our most valuable resources. Do not fill them up with things that you don't don't want to do. Now, as adults and human beings, we're always going to do things we don't want to do. Like that is part of being an adult. But if there is something that you could say no to, do it. Do it. I was doing so well with cleaning up my dishes each night, but then I got sick and stopped. So I need to reset and start again. I think restarting is, is the hard part. A thousand percent, Jennifer. And this is an example of one of those goals that when you have to restart, you have to play catch up. I very much like to tell you, don't worry about playing catch up, right? If you miss a day or you miss days, like for example, I don't have it in my arms reach right now, my gratitude journal. I last year got really behind during my first trimester. It was basically empty. And I'm seeing that right now. Like I am writing my gratitude every day and 2023 is completely blank. That was one step that it did not, like I could have gone back and made stuff up. I could have looked at my photos or my calendar and seen like, what did I do that I could say I was grateful for? Then it, it becomes more of like a, a, not even a chore, but it just doesn't serve the same purpose as every day taking a moment and saying what I'm thankful for. That is one of those things that don't play catch up. Podcast episodes, don't play catch up. Whatever it is, don't play catch up. Dishes, unfortunately, like tracking our finances or um, we had another one and it's gone. These are the kind of action steps when we miss a day or two or seven, however many days, we have to play catch up because you like there's nothing you can do. You can't start again until you have emptied wherever you're at, you've got to empty the, you've got to empty the sink, right? It's got to be clean so that you can start again. So you have to realize that the reset part is going to take you longer than it has been taking you to do the, the habit part. Okay. Mental step. Number one, number two, turn on something that you love, a podcast, a playlist, a YouTube video, prop up your phone with a YouTube video and power through and get through those. And knowing that on the other side of that, it's it's smaller again. And then when it comes to actually following through on that, that small one is what are you stacking it to? What are you also doing every day that you can do in addition to that, right? So what else do you do every night that you could also do? Or what was working before? Ask yourself, like, what was working? Because it's not like it wasn't working and that's why you got behind. You got sick and that's why you got behind. So what was working? And can you do that again? But it's it's really that mental aspect of this is the kind of goal that you have to play catch up on. Like you have to. And you're going to have to, whether it's bribe yourself, set a timer to get through that playing catch up so that it's easier again after that. Everyone's struggling with the dishes. Same right there with you. 
When that happens, I do a deep clean of my kitchen. So I want to keep it up. I love that suggestion. Yeah. Whew. Dishes are not a thing. That is why it is on my husband's list. I do not like dishes. All right. Tips for drinking water when you can't drink plain water. I know this comes up now and then I forget the tips. I drink so much coffee and don't want to drink less, just more water. Don't drink, don't drink less coffee. Drink all of the coffee. Y'all know, you know the tips. I'm going to, and you're like, you need the reminder. That's okay. Who did I say this to the other day that was like, I am happy to say things again and again. I do not get tired of giving you the tips on drinking more water. I will happily tell you them again and again, because Sometimes you need to hear things a million times. Amanda, that may actually have been you. I was texting you something that I was like, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but like sometimes you need to hear things again and again. Okay. It was you again and again. Okay. The, so tips for drinking more water. Number one, drink your water the way you like to drink it. Okay. You don't have to drink plain water. So the things, and I remember when we talked about this on a, on a live, we all then shared, oops, how we how we like to drink our water, right? Number one, colder room temperature or warm. How, how What temperature do you like your water at? Make sure it's at that temperature. Number two, do you like it flavored or not flavored? Okay. You can add flavor to your water. It's okay. It still counts as water. Number two, bubbles or no bubbles? Bubbly water still counts as water. Bubbles or no bubbles? Straw or no straw? <laughs> Those are the options. How do you like your water? Temperature, flavor, bubbles, straw. Y'all know I like my water plain, no bubbles, ice cold with a straw. So that is how my water always exists. My water is always there in the way that I like it. And that helps me drink more. Number two, start where you're at. You, that you can see all the big gazillions of recommendations, right? On like, you should be drinking half of your body weight, or you should be drinking a, a whole gallon, or you should be whatever, whatever the numbers are. There's, and a key, you're in Europe. So you're going to measure in milliliters, not in ounces anyway. Um, the number, the number to drink, it doesn't matter. That is not, that's maybe an end goal someday. Start with where you're at and use vessels, the vessel, the type of, of, of thing that you're using. I'm trying not to say cup because I don't mean cup like eight ounces. I mean thing. Let's say right now you drink half of one of these a day regularly. Great. The new goal is one. You drink one. That's the goal. Once you're drinking one consistently, then you can up it to one and a half. And then you work on that until you get to two, until you get to a point that feels good to you. Tip number three is to lay anchor it to something if you can. So maybe it's you always have a whole glass, a whole cup of whatever kind of cup you're drinking with a certain meal. Maybe one of my rules for myself is I cannot have a second cup of coffee until I finish one. Once I finish one, then I, and most of the time I, I have to do that. Like I will finish my first cup of coffee and there's usually somewhere between a half to a third like of this in there. It depends on if I've worked out or not. And then I will have to finish it before I'm allowed to have more coffee. Um, it could be that you, when you do something specific at this time of day, you make sure that you fill up your water, whatever it is. But it, trying to anchor some things to remind you to continue to drink the water. You could set alarms on your phone. That's an option. But if that I found doesn't work often well for a lot of people. So there's got to be other anchors that you anchor it to. I have flavors that I can squirt in my water. Yep. I started drinking Hint. I have never heard of that. No sugar, sugar substitutes. Different from plain water to trick my brain. Take a drink every time Lakin says water. I'm here for it. Something tells me those Stanley Cup girlies are all dehydrated. You know, I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like this thing because I do like that as a handle. I obviously like the straw and I like that it's, that it keeps it cold. It doesn't need to be, I mean, they got marketing. I don't know. I think one problem might be the temperature. I like not too cold, but the machine that has bubbles makes it too cold. I have some American water bottles cups. We assume you're talking about measurements. There's your answer. So maybe you have to make sure that the machine that makes it with bubbles, you need time for it to, to warm up. Is that the right answer? Um, or could you like make 
three quarters of it with the bubbles and then add some hot water to like bring the temperature down. It may be slightly less bubbly, but then it's like the right temperature. If you're somebody who does, my mom doesn't like her water ice cold either. Like if I gave her this to take a sip of, she'd be like, ew. So everybody is different. Ooh, I like this, Brenda. I fill up three vessels at once as part of either my AM or PM routine. And it removes the barrier of having to fill it back up and mix with some Gatorade Zero. Everyone, I also fill up the vessel as part of my routines. My morning routine has a step to fill it up and my evening routine has a step to fill it up. Um, but that's that's a definitely a great tip. Anybody else? Any before? I know there's lots of other questions. I'm going to get to them. Um, but any other, I'm trying to keep the topics together so that I can put timestamps of like, here's the section that we talked about water. So if somebody doesn't care about water, they can skip to the next part. Um, but any other questions, thoughts, suggestions, tips for, um, a key on water consumption. One step at a time that might work. Now I wait too long to start drinking the water in the bottle because I need it to get warmer. Yeah. So I think if the machine doesn't have a way for it to not be cold, then yeah, maybe adding a little bit of warm water or making sure that you make it in advance. Now, I don't know how quickly things lose carbonation. I don't like bubbles. So, you know, if you made them overnight, like if you made them at night, could you make three at night? And then they sit overnight and then in the morning, they're the right temperature for the next day. But will they, if they would lose their carbonation, that's not a solution, but that's an option. Um, or you just make, um, you know, when you finish one, you make like the one that you make, oh, you make them at work. So no, okay, never mind. But make, like get ahead of it, right? So you always have one waiting. And then when you finish the one that you're working on, you drink the one that's waiting. And at the same time, you go make one. So that one has time to sit and get warm. Does that make sense? I use a hydro jug. The plastic ones are like 73 ounces, much less refills. I think there's a hit or miss on the refill thing. Some people are motivated by less refills. And some people, I actually find I'm more motivated when I use a smaller, like this one I switched over to because I had left the other one with my sister's. I actually find myself more motivated when I use a smaller one um, and it gives, it's more, it just isn't more inspiring because I'm drinking more vessels, even though I'm drinking the same amount of water, but it's inspiring to me. Oh, you struggle with one right now. Then start with one. Focus on getting your one in. Also, if your urine is light, don't stress you're hydrated. Also true. My vessel was too big that I didn't want to stand in front of the fridge to refill it because it was slow. I mean, I don't have a fridge that dispenses water, so I don't know that problem, but that is hilarious. I used to feel that way with the, so this is another thing depending on the temperature, right? When I, when that whole craze of those like big giant plastic gallon water bottles, you remember that? And I used to use one of those. Well, there's no way that that was going to keep water cold the entire day. So I literally would fill that thing up in the morning and then use it to fill up one of these so that my water would be cold. It was so silly. That was like such a silly time of my water drinking life. But you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Okay. Check back in with me, Key, when, if you uh, need more support there. Okay. Brittany, gratitude journaling tips. So number one is your option on whether you feel like you need to do it every day. So I like the, I have mine in like a five-year gratitude journaling thing, which I talked about in the day of life that went up on Monday. And having it with dates inspires me to keep going. But, 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 if that is too overwhelming to you, start with just a notebook, just a plain journal. And if you miss a day, you miss a day. Don't worry about having to write a novel. Some days I literally just write, I am thankful for coffee. It. Like I don't elaborate. And then some days I fill up all five lines and I write lots of things and I elaborate. It doesn't have to be perfect. Number two, when makes the most sense for you. For some people like me, I'm good in the morning. I have the most energy. It's a part of my morning routine. I like it. Some people it's better as an anchor to the end of their day, right? They have their notebook on their nightstand. 
they get in bed and they say, I am thankful for whatever happened that day. Do not feel bad that you're going to repeat because you are. You, you can be thankful for partners, kids, parents, jobs, wine, coffee, more than one day. It's okay if you repeat yourself. Um, and it is, ask yourself, like, for you, what's the purpose? For me, it was about just taking a moment in the morning to think about what, like, what happened the day before that was, that was good, right? That was positive, to look for the positive. There might be another reason that it's important to you. Keep that in mind when you're doing it. Don't, in other words, don't do it just because you feel like you should. Does that make sense? Like, there's a lot of people that talk about gratitude journaling. And so it's like, it feels like it's something you have to be doing and you absolutely do not. So you, but you do need to benefit from a, like a reason for yourself. That makes sense. I saw some people give her a suggestion where it was that one. Oh, watched a random YouTube video today. Um, three things, something mundane, something by chance, something you made happen. Ooh, River J. I love that suggestion. I struggled with the word gratitude and switched to daily highlight. I like to highlight something the day before. It helps me to reflect on what happened the day before. I love that too. I think, again, it depends on what is your purpose, right? And so for Jennifer, the purpose was maybe to highlight what happened the day before. So what was the daily highlight? I start mine with, I am thankful for. Like that's, I start every entry with those first words. So it gets me started with writing. Whatever you need to think about. It could also just be, um, like what was the best thing that happened, right? Maybe if highlight doesn't, does it resonate with you? Or what was your favorite part of the day? Something like that. That's a good suggestion. But don't be too hard on yourself. Gratitude journaling is supposed to be relaxing and enjoyable, not like a chore. I also learned that I like to write it in my daily planner, something I have with me each morning. Yeah, make it easy. Make it easy for you. I stopped trying to be extra, trying to be philosophical with it. I'll thank YouTube if I watched a good video, nap time if I was extra tired. That's how I am too, Sarah. I try not to make it super complicated. It's like, like yesterday, what did I, yesterday, today's was like one word. What did I write that I was thankful for yesterday? It was, I don't know, something very simple. Yeah, it doesn't have to be super, super, like you said, philosophical. It's a good reminder. Linda, I have a quarter one goal that uh, was mapped out as a plan in January and execute in February. Got sick and now I'm behind. Not a lot of will room in March due to travel plans. Suggestions. So I would ask yourself, is it when you mapped it out as plan and execute, did you get really specific and think about like you really only have time to plan in January and execute in February? If you, if that is the answer, then we've got to move on. It's not a Q1 goal anymore. It's plan in February and execute in April, right? Like that is just, that's where you're at. If you think there is a little bit of wiggle room, maybe you plan the first half of February and you execute the second half of February and a little bit into March. But I would just reevaluate. My question for you, I guess, would be like, is it, is the Q1 goal deadline? Did you pick that? Or did someone say you had to get that done? Um, I think a lot of times when we get behind, it is our own behind, right? We picked those dates and they are essentially arbitrary. And so if you have to rework it because something popped up like a sickness that was not in your control, you rework it. And February now becomes plan. March, you're traveling. You execute in April. It's one month later. Just because it's a different quarter doesn't mean that you are like that you failed. You just pushed it back. I think this goes back to our expectations can sometimes be helpful. And sometimes it comes down to we didn't estimate properly. And so we have to be flexible with, with the progress that we're making. You pick the deadline. Okay, cool. 
back to the water from Debbie. I'm in and out most of the day, so I keep a vessel in the house and one in the car that I'm drinking out of all day. Also, I love that we keep using the word vessel, which Amanda, I got from you because you said that the other day in a text. So now I'm calling it a vessel. Um, I love that. Oh, and you're brave. Is that picture actually of your arm? Now that I'm looking at it closer, no, actually it looks like a graphic, but I'm assuming the graphic you use to then tattoo. I love that. I love that so much. Okay. I think there was one more question that I missed. Can you talk about all things power sheets for a first time user? So whether you're using the power sheets or whether you're using any goal planner for a first time user, I have a video that's called how to use your goal planner. And that is where I would start. I would, I would recommend that you watch that. It can apply to any goal planner that you plan to use but that video has the tips on how to make sure that you actually use your goal planner. Even if you watched it when I first uploaded it, you're, that was it was like the fall of 2022. So it was a year and a half ago at this point. Um, highly recommend rewatching that with where you're at in your life right now and utilize those tips to make sure that you are following through on using your goal planner, your power sheets. If you have any other specific questions, let me know. But that would be my number one tip um, for a first time user. How to make a reading habit the same way you'd make any other habit. Step one is to figure out how how you can make it even smaller. So what I have actually been brainstorming doing like a separate I don't know if it's going to be like a mini course or a YouTube series or something on like habits and routines, but the, we get all this pressure and I think it doesn't help that like one of the best selling self-help books in the world is Atomic Habits that we like, everything has to be a habit. So I would actually say step one is why do you want to have a reading habit? Is it because you want to read more books? Is it because you like reading and it's relaxing for you? Is it because everybody else does and you feel like you have to? And if that's the case, I would encourage you to come up with a, a reason on why you actually have like want to have a reading habit. Number two is when are you going to do this habit? When in your day is it going to fit into your day and how can you make it smaller? Start really small. You start a habit of like 30 minutes a day. That is huge. Don't try not to start something so huge. Make it even smaller. And then make sure that you start with reading something that you enjoy. If you have like a textbook and you're like, I am going to read this book every day. Now, you may have to do that if you're a student. But if you were trying to make a reading habit of something that you enjoy, read things that you enjoy and make sure that you're not it's not miserable when you're starting it, because otherwise you will you will maybe do it because you don't like it, but you won't stick with it. That was what it comes down to. Link it to something else like making a cup of tea and then curling up on the couch to read. It's a great suggestion. It really does come down to when in your day are you going to do it? And maybe when you say habit, you don't actually mean every day. Maybe it's just on the weekends. Same thing. When on your weekends are you going to do it? What are you going to be reading? Try to get specific as possible about some of the other things. Where are you going to be doing it? Is it on the couch? Is it in a specific chair? Is it in bed? Are you going to be reading in bed? And then remember that with any habit, you're going to miss a day. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to miss days. I mean, rewind back to the very beginning when I was talking about the Daily Stoic. I read 90% of the days in January. That's pretty good. That's a lot. I think I missed four days. But it's still not every day. You miss days. Like, we miss days. And But you have to mentally be okay with that and know that that's going to happen. Ooh, also a good point. Think about how you read or the mo the mode. I get more read listening to audiobooks while driving than at home reading a physical book. Absolutely. My family the other day told me it was cheating though. We were at, like at dinner and my sister was like, so guess how many books I've read so far this year? And she like said her number. My mom was like, I've read this many. And I said my number and it was higher than both of theirs. <laughs> and my mom looked at me and was like, how on earth is your number? You're the one with the baby. How do you, how is your number higher than ours? And I was like, well, I've listened to some of them. And she goes, mm, that doesn't count. <laughs> like, yes, it does. It totally counts. I think it counts. Anyways. All good tips on reading. 
the listening is still the same. Thank you. I think so. I think it counts. All right. I cannot believe we have five minutes left. This <laughs> literally flies by this hour. Any other questions? Anything else on your mind? It's a new month tomorrow. It's also just a Thursday. So if it's you're not changing anything drastic about your life tomorrow, that's okay. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Amanda, I can send your mom more articles than she will want to read about it because people have commented on my reading channel about it more than once. I know I noticed that you're not commenting on your, as your reading channel, you're commenting as your gaming channel. Um, no, I don't, I don't care what she thinks. It counts to me. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. She only reads on vacation. So she has, hers doesn't really count either. <laughs> My sister's here. Hi, Allie. <laughs> you're also only reading fiction over there. So different goals, different goals for different folks, man. Everybody's got, mm, tomorrow is just a Thursday. February starts next week. Love that. I, I asked, um, I asked this on Instagram in a poll. I also asked this to the community members in a text, how you were looking at, at this week was, is this week still January for you? And you're wrapping up January and tomorrow's just a Thursday and you're starting February next week. Awesome. Love that. For me, I wanted the other way around. I wanted, I was ready to start February. So I actually started one of my habits on Monday of this week. And then I'm not going to start the other new one until tomorrow. But my weekly stuff, my monthly, like all of it, I'm starting this week because I need to turn the page from January. Um, doesn't matter. Whatever works best for you. All right, y'all. Last couple minutes. Let me ask you my last question, which is what is the one thing that you're going to do this week? to make progress on your goals? What is the one step you're going to take this week to continue to make progress on your goals? While you share yours, I am going to get back into my December daily. In fact, unless people need me in the chat asking questions tonight on the community call, I'm going to do it tonight during our power hour call. Um, and I'm just going to kickstart because I think for me, this is one of those goals that it feels overwhelming how much I have left, but if I just get started and get the supplies out and get moving, it's going to move quicker and I'm going to be able to, to power through. So that is my one thing. I'm excited to hear about your one thing. If you are here live, share in the chat, even if you've said nothing the entire call, um, this is not a call again, it's a live. Or if you are watching um, the replay and you're still here, all of the hearts for you, please comment in the comments and let me know what your one thing is. I will try to reset my kitchen since charging up. Do you mean cha charging up? Is that a word that I, you have a different meaning maybe than I, in my brain. Um, it's hard to do during the week, during the work week. I feel that. Pick one goal for February to work on this month. Yes, Amanda, one step, one small step. Rest and journal for clarity. Thank you for this live. It's good to see your name. Oh, catching up. Okay. That makes more sense in my brain. I was like, wait, pick up your notebook for gratitude journaling. I love it. Reset your dishes during power hour. I love that. Yes. There you go. You can reset your dishes with us. Um, and paying off another big chunk of debt since today is payday. Yay. Plan out February, plant your spring veggies. Holy moly. Wow. Begin again. That's all you got to do. One small step, Katie. Ooh, another tip for the gratitude journal. When I'm down grumpy and do my gratitude journal, I've just written, I don't feel like being grateful today. It helps release the requirement, but often it'll spark ideas. Thank you, Brenda. Wrap up your budget for January, time blocking and writing a monthly meal plan, working on reviewing medical expenses for taxes. Oh, taxes. It's one of my least favorite activities, <laughs> gathering all that stuff. Okay. Thank you all for another awesome live. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up before you head out, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you're new here, please click that subscribe button and I will see all of you next week. Thanks for hanging out.